So today we're hopper fishing in the high country. Now we're starting off down low on one of my favorite rivers and funnily enough, we're actually starting with a hopper and a nymph, a classic hopper dropper combo. It's still early in the morning, we've got a little bit of cloud cover. The fish might not be looking up for a hopper just yet. We're gonna have a hopper on there as our indicator, but that nymph might catch our first few fish. As soon as we get a grab on that hopper though, we're switching out to dry or duck. This little section we have here, this riffle, is perfect for a hopper dropper because there'll be fish sitting on the bottom of this section and the nymph's gonna get down to them nicely. It's not so deep that they might not rock up and grab the hopper, but as I said, it's a little early in the morning. We're gonna drift a few nymphs through first using the hopper as an indicator, and we're gonna work our way up fishing these riffles as we go. Yep, there he is. On the nymph. <laughs> Fun little guy to start the day. Fun, very little guy to start the day. Even if he's small, he proves my concept this morning that these fish haven't quite woken up yet. It's still early, it's not really hot. These little guys, <laughs> off he goes, are gonna be feeding on nymphs to start the day. But the hopper's there just in case, for the moment. As you notice, I'm not doing huge casts here. I'm just doing little roll casts putting it up into the current, and then keeping my rod nice and high, keeping that hopper on top, working well as my indicator, my nymphs getting nice and deep. When I'm fishing in tight, enclosed areas like this, I don't need to make gigantic casts. I wanna make more casts and really thoroughly search the water, making sure I hit every little part of this ripple with my nymph before I move up and keep searching as I go along. I wanna be really methodical. Now, we started off in a classic little riffle where, you know, a hopper dropper or even an indicator rig will work great. But where I find hopper dropper rigs really come into their own are in these broader pools with a little bit of flow in them. I've got all kinds of areas that trout will sit here. Here in the tail out, I've got some rocks. They might be sitting behind those. You can see where the water's just breaking here behind me. Then further up, I've got some really nice overhanging tea trees with undercut banks and beautiful foamy water pushing down along them. That's gonna be my real hot spot. And again, early in the morning, the sun hasn't quite broken through yet. The fish might not be coming out absolutely smashing a hopper just yet, but using that hopper as an indicator, I can drift a nymph right past their noses, underneath where they're looking in their undercut and see if one grabs it. Or they might be looking up. We're using the <laughs> hopper as a barometer here. We've got it on just in case something wants to grab it to start the day. Once it warms up, they'll definitely be up on the hopper. Now, that's actually quite interesting. What happened there, <coughs> there he goes, is that fish actually ate our hopper. He missed it. The line slid down and I hooked him on the outside of the jaw with the nymph. Now, that happens sometimes when you're fishing with a hopper dropper rig. The nymph can act as a bit of security, especially for those smaller fish that miss the dry. But what that shows me is they're starting to look up. Now that's only one eat. I'll leave my little dropper on for now and keep fishing up, but I know they're already starting to wake up and look for hoppers. Yep. Now, funnily enough, we were watching that fish rise, but he still ate the nymph. Now it could be, if I didn't have a nymph on, he might have eaten a hopper. But I do think it's still a little early in the morning, they're still in that kind of transition period between feeding from the bottom to the top. We'll keep going along and see if we can't get another one to eat off the surface. Now, just had a really nice brownie, absolutely smashed the hopper. I missed it, which happens, you know, I'm an average fisherman at the best of times. But that makes me think I can almost definitely get rid of this dropper now. So I'm gonna click that nymph off. And I'm actually gonna change dries too. I'm gonna to go to something even a touch bigger with a little bit more kind of leggy profile to really draw those hopper eats. Now that I know they're looking up, I may as well feed them something really solid and see if I can't tease them up to grab it. Now, a lot of people might think that clipping your dropper off means you're missing out on a fish that might grab a nymph instead of a hopper. And that's true to a certain extent. Except a lot of the fish that have been grabbing the nymphs so far have been those really little rainbows. That proper big brown went straight past the nymph and 
smokes the hopper. And that's what I'm chasing today. If I'm hopper fishing, I'm usually looking for a better fish. And if I just have the hopper on, I can risk it into much tighter areas, right in under these branches, for instance, up here. I can do a few more trick shots and really try and tease these fish out of their lairs without having that nymph that could get caught on a bush or that I can't fish in super shallow water, which some of these browns will sit in looking for a hopper. Now, this is the hopper I've just changed out to. This is a Morrish hopper from Rio. I used to fish these all the time back in the States and now we've got them in the shop. They've been slain on the Tumut River and in the high country. When I'm using an indicator fly, I like to use the Chernobyl from Cat3. It's got a nice big white post on it. It works really well as an indicator and as a general all around kind of buggy looking guy. But if I'm specifically hopper fishing, I've been loving this little Morrish hopper. This is a size 10. It's the smallest one that they do. They do an eight and even a big six, which we might even throw later in the day. Now, even though this fly is completely made out of foam, so it should float, I always put floating on all of my dry flies, no matter what they're made out of because any foam is still just closed cell foam and eventually water will get into it. It'll still float, but it won't ride super high on the surface, which is how I want them to. I've also made sure that I'm gonna crush the barb. It's gonna make it easier to get out of fish and easier to get out of the back of my head. Let's see if I can't tease something up here. Came back for it, nice! <laughs> Excellent. Nice little brownie. Not the same one I lost. This would be his friend. But a beautiful fish on the hopper. Come here, mate. There you go. That is an awesome little stream brownie. He's got that big bit of foam in his mouth there. He's still full of beans. Whew, relax, mate. Relax. You're going to go home. There we go, awesome stream brownie. Absolutely smoke that big foamy hopper. We'll get that out of him and send him home. Alrighty. Didn't get too many grabs through that last run, but I reckon it's about time to start heading up to the high country a bit further. Because as this day goes on, it's gonna warm up and those rivers up the top are gonna be fishing better and better. We've started low down, we're gonna go get some altitude. Once I get out of this mud. <laughs> We've left the lower stream and we've come and picked up some altitude. We're up in the high country now. We've still got kind of broken cloud, but the sun's just poking through. It's actually awesome conditions, just warm enough for the hoppers to be about and enough wind to knock them on the water. So we're gonna go up and try and pickpocket a few of these kind of holes down here in this gorge and then work our way up through some really nice grassy edges and try and tease some big browns out from the edges just with our single big hopper. We've ditched the dropper now. We're just focusing on that single hopper and the best presentations that we can use to draw and eat out of some of these better fish. We'll go give it a crack. So what I'm doing here is sneaking up, doing short, sharp casts into every little pocket of smooth water. When you're fishing this faster water, you wanna look for any little calm spot that a fish might sit in. You notice I'm not casting far. I'm doing short, little powerful casts and reaching my rod out over the water, high sticking it, making sure I get a second of drift, see if anything whacks it, and then moving on. It's a great way to fish this little kind of pickpocket water. Now, as I'm coming further up into these bigger pools, I'm slowing down, doing longer casts, and searching with my fly. You'll notice I add a bit of movement to my flies. If you've ever thrown a hopper on the water, you'll see it kicks, takes off, and then pretends to be dead for a bit. Now, when it comes to presentation, sometimes you want a nice dead drift, other times you want a nice little twitch. Mix it up and see what the fish are after that day. Now this is the classic kind of pool that we're gonna fish with a hopper. Now we can see there's a really good bubble line coming down the middle, and that's definitely where I wanna focus. But I have an undercut bank on my own bank, and then all this soft water over on the left, if I smack a hopper in there and leave it and just twitch it in that still water, there could be a brown cruising around looking for it. So I'm gonna make sure I search under my own bank, then I'm gonna search the bubble line, then I'm gonna search the far bank in the still water over there. There he is. Oh. Right 
in that bubble line. The better fish too. That's a nice brownie. Might get that one on the reel. That's a good fish. Beautiful. That's what we're after. That is a beautiful high country hopper munching brown trout. <laughs> Still full of beans. Got it in nice and quick. We'll get it home. Yep. Now that was an awesome fish. She ended up being right up in that bubble line, pretty much where you'd expect her to be. But I got several eats in along the bank here and out in this soft water on the side. I missed them, they were smaller rainbows, so I'm not too worried I got the big brown. But just goes to show, there's no need to rush up and smash your hopper exactly at the head of the run. You can search with the hopper really effectively, especially that single hopper just by itself, throwing it into areas you might not otherwise fish, you know, risk it around and lots of movement. That one ate after a tiny little twitch, it just smacked it, hoppers move. So it's getting later in the day, it's getting warmer. There's still hoppers kicking around on this section of river, but we've decided we're gonna go even higher up and try for some really small, tight stuff and see if we can't pull a few out of the, the twig water, if you will. Um, we're gonna go up to where there's nice deep pools, a lot of little grassy undercut banks, and go smack some hoppers down and see if we can't get one or two fish on the way home. So we've come higher up now. We're right at the top of Kosciuszko. Now, we've been working up today because as it gets hotter further and further down, we want to find colder and colder water. It's better for the fish. As the water gets too hot in those lower rivers, we come up and we fish colder water up the top. Plus, the hoppers wake up later in the day up here. So we can kind of chase the hopper hatch as we go through the high country. Now, because we're on this tight little stream, I don't want to wade, I don't want to uh, alert fish to my presence, and I'm not even going to get too close to the edge. Most of my casts will actually be grass casts, where I'm gonna be casting my fly line and leader into the grass and having my hopper just land on the water like that. If I can get close enough to just get my rod tip near the edge, that's plenty. And that way I won't spook any fish in this little stream. I've also sized down hoppers, because I'm thinking in here there'll be some smaller fish and I wanna make sure I get a good hook up rate just with that slightly smaller hook and less foam because uh, as we saw, I was missing a fair few fish in that slightly broader water. Well, happens to the best of us. We've got skunked up here on this little creek. We had a few little guys look at it, but they're a little bit hesitant. You know, the water's a bit warmer than I'd like. I think we're gonna call it a day and head home. I don't wanna push it. But we worked on those nice little small creek tactics, especially that grass cast. That comes in really handy with a small creek like this. You don't need to get in the water to have success, nor do you need to crawl up and get super close and just do those little bow and arrows. You can just land your fly line on the grass, fly lands on the water, and you know, if the fish are cooperating, they usually smash it. That was a pretty sick day, working hoppers from the bottom right up to the top of the high country. Now I think we're gonna uh, go home because I'm gonna go throw more hoppers tomorrow on the tumor. So <laughs> I gotta go row a boat. <laughs>